Hello, Oil Country. It's so great to see you again as we have live coverage of the Oilers media availability here with General Manager and President of Hockey Operations, Ken Holland. We're just a few minutes away from that as uh, the GMs are wrapping up their meeting here in Montreal, Quebec, ahead of the 2022 NHL Draft. I'm Tony Barr again. Thanks for joining us here today. Uh, of course, the Oilers holding four picks in this season's NHL Draft with the first uh, in the first round at 20. 29th overall and then picks in rounds five six and seven now of course there is a lot of speculation that the Oilers uh, first round pick is in play in either recouping some later picks or uh, in rounds two and three or four uh, or bringing in immediate help we'll see if uh, Ken Holland can kind of give us any sort of confirmation on that but in speaking to Tyler Wright they are set right now as it stands to pick at number 29 I did have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the director of amateur scouting and player personnel that is available on Oilers TV and edmontonoilers.com so right after this media availability be sure to check out that conversation with Mr. Wright. All right, Ken Holland will be joining us here in just a few moments. Stay tuned.
<laughs> in my in my golf bag. Nice that I sat beside a non-golfer. Oh, so you got two. So I got two, yeah. Yeah. That's right, yeah. The free ones are as painful. No, no, yeah. How's uh how's the last 24, 36 hours been just in terms of activity and phone calls and how, how busy would you say you've been this year comparatively? Well, I mean, lots lots of phone calls. Uh, we'll see what comes of it. Um, you know, obviously talking to agents for some of our players, uh, pretty well, all the managers. So we'll don't really have any, I can't tell you anything, anything's really going on right now, but you never know when something does happen. First round pick. Could you could you move that first round pick that you have? I'm expecting that we're going to use it as of we speak now. Um, you know, we'll see what tomorrow. But I'm expecting that we're going to make a pick. Are you, are you expecting to make a pick at 29? Right now, I am. Um, I mean, we're not going to trade up. If the phone rings and somebody wants to, I don't think anybody wants to look to trade up to 29 today. But you know, you get somebody's falling. The phone rings. We'll kind of explore it at the time. Right now, I'm expecting that we're going to make a pick at 29. Ken, in a perfect world, would would you prefer to have clarity on Evander Kane's contract termination situation before going down the path of extending him potentially? Well, I mean, I would, but I mean, unfortunately, it's not a perfect world. So, um, I mean, it is it is what it is. Um, don't really have. I mean, it's 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 unique. It's different. Um, so I don't, really, I, don't, I don't really know. Just wing, sort of wing it. You know? <laughs> Free agency is kind of a time where it's always a scramble out of the gate a little bit. And if you miss that first go, sometimes you can be left standing there. Is that the added difficulty with this situation that, you know, he's going to take a fair chunk of change, but to stand there and and keep that free is tough to do. Yeah, I would say this to you, Ryan. I think it's going to be... I'm interested to see what goes on the 13th of uh, July. Um, you know, in talking to, you know, many managers, lots are in the same situation that we're in. Uh, the cap's only gone up a million dollars. Restricted free agents always, obviously, uh, you know, with our, they, 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 they're looking for salary increases. Uh, you know, so I, the market's tight. The market's tight. So it's going to be an interesting next uh Seven to ten days to see what what's 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 going on. You tried to get goaltending in the last couple of free agency periods. Is that like priority number one? Is that where you want to put your eggs? Uh, this this goal? Well, on? obviously with Koski for sure being gone, um, and um, you know, I met with Smitty, had breakfast with him the other day. Uh, you know, he's he's banged up. You know, he's banged up pretty bad. You guys talked to him at the end of the year, so obviously I'd like to, you know, in the next. Uh, 10 days uh, have, have done have something done in net. How active have you been on the trade front in the goalie market? Um, a little bit, a little bit. Um, can't tell you there's a little bit, not not a lot, but a little bit. Does it look more likely that you go the free agent route or the trade route? Um, I would bank on the free agent route, but Again, you know, you never know. You know, you're like I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. So, you know, you make all these calls. Tomorrow, I'm going to go back. I talk to a few people in there. I'll, I'll talk to a few more, and then uh, uh, I'll call again tomorrow. So I just you keep kind of pecking away. Does the chance of activity pick up now that everyone's back together for the draft in the same room, wherever the last two years, remote, or does it not matter? Um, I don't know if it matters, but it's 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 more fun, I guess, right. <laughs> to see some faces. Right. Yeah. Okay, I had a question from yeah. Mark Spector from Sportsnet back home. He's asking about, in regards to reports of Yesapol Yarvi, is that deal draft day dependent or can that stretch into the free agency window as well? Uh, I think it could stretch all summer if we wanted it to. Not really, no. And you're in the, uh, the bio window right now. Are you considering any, any bargains? Um, I'm considering, but I'm hoping I'm not going to have to do that. 
lot going on with players in Russia. Can you tell, are, are Sam Rukov and uh, Petrov, are they back there? Or have you, what can you tell us about? Well, Sam Rukov's in, in, in Edmonton. Uh, I'm not sure where Petrov is. Um, now that was as, as of last week I saw Sammy, so I'm not sure where Petrov is. Well, I think I think I think I think I think we're all concerned with what's going on, you know, not in, in Ukraine and in Russia, but just again, you just try to you're trying to handle it, manage it the best you can. So on a day to day basis, but I, I believe Sammy's in uh, in Edmonton. I'm not sure where Petrov is. Of concern in the room, I mean, are there solutions that that, that were brought up as to, to help those teams and players who are in, in tough situation uh, over there? Not really, no. Did, did the situation that's happening with Russia, with Ukraine, impact how you put your list together for tomorrow? You know, I've talked to Ty to write about that. Um, you know, we're going to talk again tonight. Um, you know, he's obviously going to make the final decision on the on the on the call. But I'll make the final decision, but I mean, in terms of the players, so uh, we'll see. I mean, I, I guess if you're picking at 29, and you, you know, we'll we'll play it by ear. We'll stop, we're going to play that by ear. Ken, during your days in Detroit, you were not talking first overall, and even with the Oilers, you're not talking first also. Well, we did in 85-86. We got Joe Murphy. <laughs> yeah, That's how old yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry about Joe. Okay. <laughs> I'm curious to know, is it harder for you to read what Ken Hughes is going to do because he's a rookie GM, or you have a pretty good feeling that the Canadian will be picking that player? Well, he might be a rookie GM, but he's been around the business a long time, and he's a, he was a, he's a shrewd negotiator. He was an agent, you know. He's on the other side, so uh, you know. I'm obviously, I think you know the, the whoever's picking first, they they want to keep it a secret, probably, so that's uh, you know. So when you announce it, it's uh, and it's, a it, it, it's a bigger bigger moment. So they're doing a great job. <laughs> Martin Saint Louis was involved also. You know, spoke with Shane Wright, things like that. Uh, wh where do you stand, like, as far as you know, philosophically, as far as involving your head coach in the draft process, especially when it comes to higher picks, I guess, that are more maybe NHL ready. Uh, you know, I haven't been there in a while, but uh, uh, um, I guess I would say that um, you know you're looking for as much information as you can when you make decisions. You know, certainly when we're talking about free agents, you know, I've, I've, I ask my coach his opinion. Uh, quite often I ask, uh, you know, the, the, the two or three or four best players their opinion in some situations. So, you know, here's a situation obviously where he's gathering information. Did, Joe, did your coach talk to Joe Murphy back in the day? Do you remember? <laughs> That was a good one. Uh, who was the coach? I uh, can't remember who the coach was. Jacques Demers? Jacques Demers, maybe? Uh, might have been Jacques Demers. No, it wasn't Jacques Demers. It was uh, Harry Neal, maybe. So I don't know. I don't think Harry, Harry talked. Yeah, he was he was in Michigan State. And Jimmy D talked to him a lot because he was an hour down the road. Yeah. Uh, how would you characterize any conversations you've been able to have with, with Evander Kane's camp and, and kind of where things sit at this moment with talks there? Uh, how would I characterize? You know, I, 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 um, I've had lots of talks. I've had lots of talks. I was with Dan uh, Milstein uh, yesterday. I was with him the day before. I've talked, so I've had lots of talks to Dan Milstein. Um, you know, I think that it's like I said before, uh, you know, obviously we're tight on the cap. Many, many teams are tight on the cap. Um, so I think sometimes you're going to have to, we're all have to, going to get to a certain place, maybe the 13th of July, and figure out what's going on. Yeah, is there an indication? they indicated to you that they would prefer or that they are going to go to market just to see what's out there, though? I don't know. I mean, I, I plan to talk again. But, I mean, we're a week away. At, at this stage of the game, anything's a possibility. You know, I'm, I'm not. You know, I'm not, not here telling you we're. I'm close to any kind of a deal. So, you know, now you can wake up tomorrow and things change. But uh, you know, there's a. Is there a possibility that he's on the market July 13th? Absolutely. There's a lot out there in the ether about potential turnover and lots of names out there. Obviously, you know who may or may not. But this team also got to the final four. So where's that balance between 
you know, this group got you there, but also understanding there needs to be some level of turnover. Like, how much do you foresee? Well, there's usually turnover in the off season. Um, possibly could be a little more than normal. I mean, obviously, right off the top, we're talking about goaltenders, right? For the last three years, we've had this, the two same goaltenders. You know, we're so, I mean, there's a chance we could have two different goalies. Um, you know, Stu Skinner. You know, has, he's, he's a waiver player now. So, is there going to be is there going to be change? I, I would expect that there's going to be change. I mean, I, I think I said at the end of the year, I, there's no chance we could bring the same team back. So, you know, I'm exploring. You know, you, you talked about b- b- buyouts. You talked about trades. We talked. About, so, you know, those are all the things that you know. What's the status of D- Duncan Keith? What's the status of Mike Smith? Um, what's going on with Evander? These are all I mean, these are all balls that are just sort of bouncing around. And I'm just uh, trying to uh, eventually have to make some decisions. Then we all have to make some decisions. And uh, but there's going to be change. Yeah. Can I, as one of the more experienced executives in the NHL, who's been around for a while, what do you make of the changing face of the executive group? We're getting more women hired. We have Mike Weir as the first, you know, you know, black person as a GM. What do you? What do you make of the changing face of, of the NHL right now? Well, I think it's it's fabulous, um, and I think it's going to continue. Um, you know, obviously, um, to bring you know minorities and uh, uh, women into our sport. You know, you think about all the uh, you know the, with the women hockey players on the, the Canada team, the U.S. team, and there's, there's other countries too. But you know they've been playing the, the game of hockey since they've been little girls, just like the little boys. So I think it's, uh, I think it's fabulous. It was great to see Mike Greer in there. And, you know, met him for the first time. I, you know, followed his career, but I've never really met him. So uh, I think it's it's uh, great for our league, and I, I and I would expect it's going to continue more and more. Can I ask you about? Yeah. I, I, was, I was talking to Kelly McCrimmon about some of the big profile players he's, he's traded for, and you, you've traded for some big profile players. I'm curious, what, what's most difficult about making those types of deals? I mean, I guess, what are the hurdles? Why do you think more of those deals don't happen? Trades? Yes, for, for, a, for a high profile player like, like Eichel, or like a lot of the ones Vegas has um, got. Why do not more? Well, I, you know, I think it's gotten harder in a, in a cap world right. um, because of money. Um, you know, and because of the cap world, you know, I think back to pre-05, you know, maybe there was, you know, eight teams that could legitimately win the Stanley Cup. You know, in the West, it was Dallas for, for about eight years, Dallas, Detroit, Colorado. In the East, it was Jersey, Philly, Toronto, maybe the Rangers. You know, so now now that list of eight's probably 16. You know, there's more teams can, and if not win the Cup, can, can make the playoffs and go on a playoff run. So because of uh, competitive balance, because of the salary cap, um, you know, those are factors that make it difficult to to make those kind of deals. And then, and then, and then, I would, the last point would be, you know, those those deals are happening where teams are both are good, but if one team's bad, you know, on a rebuild, right. and one team's up at the top, maybe it makes it easier, but. You know, it's got, all the stars have got to align, and uh, they don't align that often. Do you, do you think it takes more courage to make a trade like that now when there's more? Yeah. You don't know your team is one of those eight. Well, I think you got to fill when's your window, you know, and then, uh, you know, how good can we be, and does this, does this take us to another level, and, and then you, you make a... You know, the trade's got to work for both teams, obviously. Right. So if you're getting the player now, you're trying to do something that the other teams may be building for down the road. Um, so it's, they're out there, but they just, it's just, they're, there's, there's not many of them, but, but they are, they're, I mean, they've happened. You've just talked about one. They, the, the odd one does happen. Thank you. I hope are you I good? You okay, yeah. Do you have players in Russia right now throughout the organization? That we own. The, the, your, from your players, do you have players who are currently in Russia this summer? And do you actually do you have concerns yeah, I, they're going to be? I, added I don't. I, we, they asked me about. Uh, we got Samarukov and uh, Petrov. Petrov played in uh, the OHL and Samarukov. I think Samarukov and his wife. I believe they're in Edmonton. Okay. I'm not sure where Petrov is. Okay, but do you have any concerns about their situation if they go back to their family this summer, or is, is it a non-issue for you right now if they're in Canada? Well, you know. I, 
first off, it's out of my control. So I, I, I think, uh, but certainly, we're, I think we're all concerned. That's what I said here. We're all concerned about things that are going on in the world, you know, in Ukraine, in Russia. So, but I don't. Um, obviously, it's 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 not it's out of my control. Thank you. No. Good. No, no, I have not. No. I don't think he's going back because I think he understands this is a very, very big season in his career. Um, you know, he's a waiver player for the first time. Uh, he wants to play in the NHL. Um, he wants to play for the Edmonton Oilers. Um, you know, we've got him, we've got Broberg, we've got Nima Line that played some hockey. I know Deharnay, Bouchard. So, you know, he's in a competition. Um, I do plan that that one of those young defensemen is going to be on our team for sure, uh, maybe two. So I think because of and I've, I've told him that face to face at the year end. I told that to Bro, uh, Broberg. I told that to to Nima Linen. Um, we're trying to win, um, and if I got to put somebody back in the American League or put somebody on waivers because we're trying to win, I'm prepared to do that. So I think my understanding is he's staying at Edmonton all summer so that he's ready to rock and roll when training camp starts in September. And you uh, lived it. Did you get a chance to watch the uh, Detroit, Colorado documentary at all? I, no, I have not. No, I haven't heard anything about it. Was it good? Yeah, was it? Yeah, I will watch it one day. I lived it, but it was pretty good when we lived it. But yeah, uh, <laughs> so I'll watch it. Yeah. But, uh, Are you surprised that uh, there's no forgiveness between you? Uh, uh, McCarty? Draper McCarty or Draper? Draper and Lemieux, yeah. Mm, no. I mean, the... the, the you know the emotions were, were were very they were real they were very they were very real um you know chris draper got badly badly hurt so drapes is really intense um you know and i think that uh you know it was it was it wasn't like it was one year it was about six it was about seven years there of, of a real intense intense rivalry so you know for intense players, I'm sure. Over time, it probably goes a little bit, but, you know, Drapes was obviously drilled into the boards and his face was rearranged, so I, I don't blame him. So. Hey, when you're talking about trades, which are, I'm curious, does, does it change when you're together like this? Does the dynamic of being able to trade or wanting to trade, the social part of it, does it change it at all? Maybe a little bit. Certainly, I mean, I, I you know, I've had some, up until today, you know, I'm on the phone from one hotel to another hotel, so they could be they could be in Buffalo, Chicago, Boston, Pittsburgh, New York. I don't think it would matter. Certainly today was good. Uh, I got here at 12 o'clock, and for an hour I talked to six, eight managers and uh, face to face. So, you know, I, that was in a little bit after. Um, does it make a bit of a, maybe makes a little bit of a difference? But you know, the world we live in today with these phones and texting and everything, I don't know that it's going to affect one way or the other for a deal to be done. Do you have a sense if the value you're going to be looking for for Pugliarvi would be out there? Do you have a sense for that yet, what the market looks like? Uh, do I have a sense? Yeah, I mean, I may have talked to everybody about, not everybody, but I've talked to um, all the managers I think I need to talk to about the things that I, I'm looking at. So I've, I've got an idea um, where I'm at. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. See you tomorrow.